Question number two, Andrew Little. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. Uh, my question is to the Prime Minister. Does he stand by his statements that his plan to sell state houses, quote, is not about selling to developers, end quote, and he would be, quote, amazed, end quote, if the likes of the Salvation Army were hesitant to get involved? Oh, Mr Honourable Speaker. Bill English on behalf uh, of the Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, yes, the social housing reforms are about better outcomes for our tenants, many of whom have been locked into dependency for decades, where governments have done very little to assist them to housing or economic independence. The Salvation Army yesterday said it's keen to pursue housing partnerships between itself and the government and others. In fact, I'm advised it is in the process, it is in the process right now of registering as a community housing provider, which will of course give it access to income related rents for the many hundreds of seriously needy tenants that it currently looks after. I'm sure the Salvation Army will welcome access to a larger subsidy for New Zealanders in serious housing need. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Is it correct that he's considering a sweetheart deal for private developers with measures including selling the houses below book value, offering subsidies, allowing houses to be rented at market rates or allowing them to be sold into the private market? Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, as a result of the first opportunity in 70 years for many people to have an opinion and to participate in better housing for the most needy New Zealanders, we've heard all of those ideas and we're going through a process of working with them and listening to them because we all have a common purpose to do a better job for the tenants. The transactions that have been proposed, however, will be run on a commercial and competitive basis. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Was today's New Zealand Herald editorial correct when it said his policy, open quotes, amounts to a subsidy leaving taxpayers out of pocket and it raises the question of the whole point of the exercise, end Absolutely. quote. Uh, Honourable uh, Bill English, on Mr. Behalf Speaker, of the Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, no, uh, but the New Zealand Herald may be interested to know that the government values its houses currently as if it is a developer. It values them as if it can get the highest price for an individual house on the day. And of course, social housing providers who are more focused on looking after the tenants don't believe that those valuations are correct. That as social houses, they're not there to capture the full capital gain. And that it's the issue is precisely the opposite of the one the New Zealand Herald thinks it is. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Which of these community housing experts is wrong and why? Major Campbell Roberts, who said of the housing sell-off, quotes, I don't think there's been enough thinking gone into it. Or Property Institute Chief Executive Officer Ashley Church, who said, quote, if a large, credible social agency like the Salvation Army thinks that the current proposal is too risky, it's unlikely that any other group is going to be any more willing to pick it up. Or thirdly, the Iwi Leaders Forum housing spokesperson Sonny Toe, who said, Quote, I don't think it's a good policy. Ah. <laughs> Honourable Bill English well, on behalf of Mr. the Prime Speaker, Minister. Mr Speaker, two of those three have been knocking on my door for three years telling us to hurry up. They have been criticising... The Iwi Leaders Group has been criticising the government for taking too long to work out the details of how to do these transactions. So, Mr Speaker, we have every confidence uh, that there's widespread interest in a once-in-a-generation opportunity to redevelop communities who have suffered from the blight of mismanaged state housing and whose tenants have been neglected by governments who did not support them into independence. And increasingly, the Labor Party are about the only people who believe that the way it's being done now is perfect. Order. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Well, in light of that answer, then, is Major Campbell Roberts wrong when he says the policy won't, quote, improve the lives and living conditions of state tenants, end quote? Right. Honourable Bill English on behalf of the Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, yes, I believe he is wrong. Uh, and, but I don't believe he actually... I don't believe that is the Salvation Army's views, frankly. Otherwise... <laughs> Otherwise... 
Otherwise, they wouldn't have invested five years in assisting the government develop the policy. Major Campbell Roberts was in the initial advisory group. He has been supportive and testing about the policy for five years, and I, I respect his view, but on that one, I differ from him. Supplementary question, Tim McIntyre. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What reports has the Prime Minister seen supporting the government's social housing reform program? Honourable Bill English on behalf of the Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, I've seen one that, um, that is a pretty good description of the possibilities. We need large-scale urban developments backed by private sector developers and community housing organisations. Such developments cannot happen without the government playing a role. Private sector developers will invest and do what they do best, designing and building great places for people, and there's a vital role for community providers to add affordable housing. Mr Speaker, that's a, a, a description of what the policy could be. From Phil Twyford, the Labor housing spokesman. Sup order. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, it's 31 for two, and time is marching on. We need to get a move on. After telling, Mr. Speaker, after telling the House last week, quotes that there is not a housing crisis. End quote. Isn't it true that New Zealand not only has a social housing crisis and a housing affordability crisis, but now the government has a housing policy crisis as well? Yeah. Honourable Bill English, Mr. On behalf Speaker, of the Prime Minister. What we know with the trend, track record of the Labor Party, as soon as they start calling it a crisis, it comes right. The manufacturing crisis, which disappeared pretty much the day they christened it that way. No, Mr Speaker, I disagree with all those comments. Uh, we have a once-in-a-generation opportunity to improve the lives of the most seriously needy New Zealanders who have been neglected by past governments in housing that was of low quality, and this government is going to change it with the assistance of many hundreds, if not thousands, of other people in New Zealand who want the same thing. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Why is the government wasting so much time and public money on this convoluted policy that won't do an ounce of good, yes. rather than, than just getting on with the job and building more houses for Kiwi families in need? Yes. Come on. Honourable Bill English, on behalf well, of the Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, of course, it's doing both. But we're not just we're not just dealing with the short-term issue of more supply on the ground faster, and Housing New Zealand can become a major supplier of that under these reforms. We're also dealing with the longer-term issue of people locked into long-term welfare dependency, or in some cases, under-servicing of their need in a system that focused on houses rather than people. We're happy to be the party bringing in a policy that focuses on the people who need housing rather than the Labor Party's focus on the houses, the state houses. Order. Order. Question. Order. Question number three, Materia Turo. Thank you, Mr Speaker.